Hi everyone. Uh, in this week's edition of Bikinis and Martinis, this is our second episode, I wanted to spend some time talking about our current state of affairs. Um, we have been back about a week now into Florida. Uh, we are at Fort Pierce and we are unfortunately at a marina. Um, for those of you that don't know, we run into some boat problems on our way crossing the Gulf Stream. Um, our nine into what should have been a 12 hour sail and ended up being a 16 hour sail um, had us losing our starboard motor. Um, we couldn't fix it at sea. So uh, we had no choice but to come into a marina and um, Eric and his father have uh, as of today, they've taken off, they've got the motor in hand, and they are going to create a crate and they're going to freight ship it to Pennsylvania where the owner of the company that built the motor will be able to take a look at it and get it fixed. So we're here in a marina and um, it really got me thinking about how much money we are currently spending and of course how much money does that mean that we have spent in the five months that we're cruising. So. Um, I ended up taking a data dump from the two different credit cards that I used while we were in the Palmas, and I'm happy to report um, that we spent only $10,000 for those five months. Now let me explain what that $10,000 was, and also what it was not. Uh, it only covered the period of time that we left the United States until we got back to the United States. So all of the money that we spent provisioning the boat, we spent a lot of money getting the supplies on this boat for what we would be consuming for protein, for the limited amount of uh, food that we brought over that was fresh, and of course um, everything that's in our storage lockers, you know, the pastas, the rice, the camp goods. So it did not include that. But the $2,000 did include all of the money that we spent in diesel consumption, all of the money that we spent going out to get meals, whether it was a lunch or a dinner or, or whatnot while we were there. Um, entertainment. Entertainment is an interesting category because it's not like you're going to go to the Bahamas and then go find a movie house and go watch the latest blockbuster. No, enter entertainment in this regard really had to do with um, things that I was doing to pamper us. For example, entertainment might have been um, getting a haircut, which we did not. Um, but I would have categorized uh, getting a haircut as entertainment. It probably would have been very entertaining. Um, and then also it included a very expensive spa day that I treated us to after the third big storm that hit us in December. Um, we spent uh, a number of dollars on groceries. It is incredibly expensive how, how much it costs to refit your groceries when you are in the Bahamas. Easily two to three times the cost and you are getting not fresh food, um, but it is what you do. And you know what? I'm not complaining about that. Um, while I am a self-described foodie, it was perfectly okay for us to have a very limited selection of fresh uh, fruit and vegetables. Um, we did spend a, a, a little bit of money at marinas hiding out from storms, but um, that accounted to a, some total of three weeks out of the five months. The rest of the time, we were on the hook. We were in anchorages uh, where it didn't cost us anything to stay there. Um, finally, there was a, a bit, there was a time where I came back to the United States. Uh, I had to come back for work. And so I had a number of things shipped to one of my best friends in California, and I picked all of that stuff up. Now that included some parts and supplies. Um, it, it included a little bit of uh, food, like I brought in some breakfast bars, and I, of course, had to pay the VAT on the way back in for that. Um, but it also had, you know, shampoo, conditioner, body wash, that kind of stuff. So we did do a little bit of what I would call stateside provisioning while we were in the Bahamas. And then finally, the amount of money that we were spending on internet and satellite. So um, I actually feel pretty happy about the fact that it was only $2,000 uh, a month. Again, $10,000 for, uh, for the five months we, we were there. If I were to, um, if, if we had been land-based, I guarantee you we would have spent a heck of a lot more money, money than that. But now that we are back in the States, um, a couple of things have really come to mind for me. When we first got back to Fort Pierce, we were beset by a number of storms. Again, big lightning and thunder just rolling through this part of the state and our boat was rocking and rolling and yeah we were at a dock and we are we are on a dock we were at a marina but all i kept thinking of is i don't want to be at anchor for this that was number one number two was 
it's hotter here than it was in the Bahamas, and it's going to continue to get hot. It's not even June, and um, I've got my air conditioning going. I'm sitting inside doing this testimonial. So I guess you can take the girl out of the land, but you can't take the land luxuries uh, away from the girl, at least this girl. So I've decided to bite the bullet. I had originally budgeted only $500 a month on average for the year, for a full year. Um, to have marina space, but I actually don't think we're going to be able to, I don't think I'm going to be able to enjoy the summer with it super hot. So you may call me a princess and that's completely fine, but it is about preference and choice. And remember, I work full time, uh, 12 to 8, uh, Monday through Friday. So the thought of being outside in the heat or worse, inside in the mugginess um, actually didn't really appeal to me. So uh, we will be um, continuing our journey once the motor gets fixed. We are going to be going up to St. Augustine. That's going to be about a 24-hour sail for us. Um, that's where Eric's dad and stepmother live, and that's where we're hoping that his mother and stepfather, who actually are a bit inland and a little bit south of uh, St. Augustine, are going to be able to come and see us so that we can spend some time with family. Uh, so we think we're going to be staying there about a week or so and then we're going to make the next hop and our next hop is going to be Savannah, Georgia. We need to be out of Florida by July 15 or earlier depending upon when the storms uh, really start to kick up in earnest this season. 715 is when Pantaneous um, cuts off the insurance uh, if you are below the Florida, Georgia line. So we need to be up north of Florida. So Savannah, we're going to be coming and staying there probably about two months. Um, and then after Savannah, we'll be taking another hop and we will be going to Charleston. And that's where we'll spend uh, the rest of the summer for the most part. Uh, we'll have about a month to get from Charleston back down. We'll do a little bit of hops. Those will be at anchor. The rest of the time is going to be at marinas. Even with monthly rates, it's still actually very, very expensive. I am going to be looking at as long as they can take us. And that's another story. Um, probably twelve to thirteen hundred dollars a month between uh, the dockage fee and the electricity fee. The good news, of course, in the United States is that our water is free, or city water is free. So uh, at least we don't have to worry about that, and there'd be no chance in hell that we would be making water anywhere here in the United States. The, the water there is just not, um, it's not clean enough for uh, for us to, to risk A, the, the water maker, and B, the water quality. So um, so that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, I am okay with throwing money at a problem um, when I feel fearful. And right now, I'm feeling feel fearful again. Um, I know that the storms are going to be more frequent. They're going to be more violent than what we had uh, during the winter in the Bahamas. And... Um, I'm still actually recovering from the amount of times that we have been thrown around, the number of times that we've dragged anchor, um, the number of times that you know we've ran into problems when even at anchor uh, with the boat. I don't want that to happen. I, I think um, five months, and that was our first season was five months. But when we go back to the Bahamas to see the places that we didn't get to see and go even further south, uh, we do plan to go all the way to my iguana this time. <clears throat> being at anchor and dealing with mother nature for six months uh, I think allows me the ability to say I I'm gonna be at a marina when we're here in the United States um, we'll see how the next uh, five months go and um, I'll, I'll let you know how I'm feeling as it happens <sighs> until then I hope the summer treats us all very well and I thank you for watching and if the, any of this resonated with you, please give the video a like. Uh, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe. And we will have our next video up for music and lyrics, which is the sailing portion of our channel, uh, probably in the next two to three weeks. Got a little delayed with the motor problems. Thank you so much. 